today's panel, and then we'll have each of the other panelists introduce themselves. And then we will start with the biology presentation, and then our coach will talk about some health and fitness stuff. And then I will also uh, come in and tag in specifically the information about lupus and cancer and thyroid information. So you guys are aware of your groups, right? Yes? Everyone know what they're working on. So be prepared to address those questions to each panelist as needed. All right? We ready to go? Diagnosed with it, but today now older people are being diagnosed with it just as much. 
as some younger people. So it's known as such as well. Any questions so far about what diabetes is? Any questions? Now let's talk a little bit about the food. Food is very, very important with someone who has diabetes. One, because they have to watch how much they eat. In where I teach, where I work, we go over the plate method. The plate method is very, very important. The plate method, this is basically what we, what we teach people. Half of their plate should be vegetables, and then a small portion of their plate should be starchy uh, vegetables, starchy, can be starches, and then a small portion can be protein, which is meat. Now a lot of us, I know, usually when we have our plate, half of our plate is what? Meat, exactly. Half of our plate is meat, which is protein. But when you have diabetes, you have to be very, very careful with the amount of starches that you eat because it breaks down into sugar, which leads to high blood sugar, which is what we want to prevent. When someone with diabetes has very high blood sugars, it can get very, very bad. People can go blind. They can lose their sense of touch, which is called diabetic neuropathy, which is the feeling in your fingers, in your feet. Um, people can have damages to their kidneys, people can have damage to their liver, all different types of things can happen and the worst is amputation. Maybe you know someone who has had to have their foot removed, um, someone that is not able to use their hands and their fingers, they don't even have feeling in it. So those are some of the complications that can happen just because of someone really not managing their diabetes how they should be. So an important thing, go ahead. So an important thing with someone that has diabetes, they really have to be careful with their diet. That's what we teach where I work, is we teach healthy eating lifestyles, exercise, because it's so, so, so important with someone that has diabetes. If you're not eating correctly, you can have high blood sugars, where your blood sugars are just going crazy. We have very tiny blood vessels in our eyes, in our fingers, all over our body. So if you have all of that sugar just rushing, 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 and those blood vessels, it can get very, very dangerous. Another thing is if someone is not eating correctly, if they're not eating enough, then that means that they don't have enough energy in their cells. Because remember, the main point of food is for energy. That's the main point of food. When you guys that you you play sports, you play, you're in basketball, football, track, the main point of you eating food is for energy. You're not going to have any energy if you get out there on the football field and you're not eating a good diet. You're not going to have any energy to sit in class and focus. So the same thing with someone that has diabetes, related to someone who's physically active, make sure that your diet is very, very important to your everyday lifestyle because that's the main source of food. It's like gas in a car. A car is not going to go very fast, go very far if it doesn't have any gas. So this is how important food is when it's related to diabetes uh, type 1 and type 2. Any questions so far? Yes.
which weighs about 10% of a population of people who have diabetes have type 1. That leaves 90% of people with diabetes that's type 2. Now, if someone has an issue trying to gain weight, uh, we would recommend them definitely, they need to know, we need to know what kind of medications that they're taking. Secondly, we want to make sure that it's a balanced diet, like so. We don't want them to have too many carbs that are not, they don't have enough vitamins and minerals in their diet. We want that, whatever they're eating, we want it to be able to give them the nutrients that they need. Um, good carbohydrates would be pastas, uh, fruits, vegetables, because fruits are actually a carb. They break down into sugar. A lot of people think that when you think about carbs, you think about pizza or chips or something like that. But fruit is a carb just as well as some vegetables. They break down into sugar. So when you talk about gaining weight, a healthy weight, you want to make sure it's balanced all the way across, but it's just moderation. Moderation is definitely key. Other questions? Was there a question behind you? Yes, ma'am. Um, what does type 2 diabetes do to you? What'd you say? I'm sorry, honey. What does type, type 2 diabetes do to you? What does type 2 diabetes do to you? Well, exactly just a lot of the things I explained. Some of the complications, though, some of the complications can definitely be leading to blindness, people leading um, that might have amputations. What type, two di what type 2 diabetes is doing in the inside is it, it's, um, Basically how I can explain it is, it's a progressive disease, okay? Someone with type 2 diabetes, their pancreas is not making as much insulin as it should be making. So over time, over time, the pancreas is an organ just like any other body. Over time, it's going to eventually keep working and working and working. And for some people, it eventually stop, it stops working at all. So they can't make insulin at all. Um, some of the complications, like I was saying earlier, could lead to blindness, could lead to someone just being totally dependent upon insulin because their pancreas is not making it anymore. It could also be um, other leading to other complications like kidney disease. That's another organ that's on your sheet. Because what the kidney is doing is filtering all of the waste in our body. So if we have severely high blood sugars, then that's also causing damage to other organs. So that's why we want to make sure that we take care of one problem so it won't lead to another. So you won't have heart attacks and strokes, which is leading to other diseases throughout your body. Okay. So when you have diabetes, it's definitely something that you want to make sure that you're trying to keep intact so it won't lead to other complications. Yes, sir. It definitely can be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely if you're not taking care of those blood sugars. If you're not if you're not managing your blood sugars correctly, it definitely can be. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so, so important to take care of it. Can we hold um, our next diabetes questions? We're going to try to get back to them, but let's move to the next panelist, and then we'll try to catch the rest of our questions. Don't forget it. You may want to write it down. Good morning. I'm Coach Foster. I'm one of the uh, PE teachers here and football coach as well as a track coach. Uh, I went to San Houston State University in Huntsville, Texas. I uh, was blessed and privileged to be on an uh, athletic scholarship there. While I was there, I took up uh, kinesiology, which is a study of the body and how it works in relation, in relation to sports. Um, I actually went to school to be a physical therapist, and then as I started going through, I was looking at uh, changing it up to be a, uh, actually be a sports trainer. Uh, and then coaching kind of took over there after football uh, was over with, uh, so that's where I am now. Uh, as far as your question, uh, young man, about the uh, about the health, uh, what to eat, healthy foods to eat, uh, and she hit kind of hit the nail on the head. Uh, proteins is one of the biggest things that you can do if you're trying to gain healthy weight. Uh, now, in saying that about gaining weight, you still need to have some kind of activity that you're doing. If not, it would turn into fat. But you that's not what you want. So if you're trying to gain weight, you up your proteins, eat your carbohydrates, carbohydrates and sugar is something to burn your body burns up first. Uh, but actually eating good proteins, healthy proteins will actually help you on that. Um, questions? Any more? Any more? Yes, sir. Um, what exercises um, 
routines would you recommend for someone who wants to gain muscle? Say a little bit louder. What exercise routines would you recommend for someone who wanted to gain muscle? What exercises would I uh, recommend for somebody who wants to gain muscle? Uh, now, actually, and, and you asked that question, I actually have a cousin that works for Atlantic Records, and I'm actually training him kind of long distance. Uh, you make your, your four core lifts, or, or, and, and I know in football we do them, but your bench press, uh, squats, power clean, and incline bench press is mainly the muscle that you try to work. So your, your chest, which is your upper body, the legs, quads, and hamstrings, which is your lower body, you always want to incorporate those. Uh, the way, the way most of the workouts go, like that I, perform, that I do for people depends on, first all I look at is, is a female or male. And then from there, it's always, and I know I'm gonna say this, but it's always harder for women to lose weight because they retain so much water weight than, than, than men. Men have a tendency to get rid of a lot of water weight a lot faster. And some other things that, reason why women may retain water weight. Uh, but I look at that, so most women that I prefer, like trying to work out, they always put a lot more cardio, which is running, walking, riding a bike. I always, always put more of that into their workout so they can they can get rid of a lot of the water weight. And I actually tell them to up their water intake because it helps you go to the restroom, which therefore helps you re release a lot of the water that you drink. Men, on the other hand, like for myself, when I was younger, I had a real high metabolism, so I had to try to slow myself down and eat six, five to six small meals a day, as well as lifting the weights, you know. So like on a Monday, you may do chest, which is upper body, on Tuesday, you may do legs, on Wednesday, you may do your arms, shoulders, and back. And then you come back on Thursday and Friday, you kind of hit the, the other main body parts light. So you basically, if you're lifting, lifting in real heavy, you probably need 48 hours to let your muscle recover from that stream of exercise before you come back in attack that muscle again. Uh, how can someone maintain their current weight? Uh, number one, and I, and I still I'm gonna say this, is actually being active. Uh, to, to, to gain weight, you have to actually put in more than you burn. Okay, so I'll say it again, to gain weight, you have to put in more, more food, more calories of food in that you burn. To maintain weight, burning 1,700 calories a day, you need to at least put in 1,700 calories a day to maintain your healthy weight. You know what I'm saying? If, you, if you're putting in 2,400 calories a day and you burn and you're only burning 17, well, you're going to actually want to maintain some type of weight somewhere. Yes, sir. Conversely, what, what's the best way to recover from these steroids? Number one, don't use it. Uh, that's always an easy way. Uh, as far as converting from steroid use, a lot of, and I know because I've been in the, the profession, a lot of guys that use steroids, a lot of them wind up hurting their body, and, and a lot of them comes to what she was talking about, it kind of attacks your body kind of like a diabetes does. It can cause all the organs in your body to shut completely down. Uh, I actually witnessed a guy uh, about seven, eight years ago when I was working out a lot in the gym on steroids, and I watched him just like his nose, like somebody punched him in the nose when they working out because his body just couldn't maintain what he was doing to it. Uh, I always say stay away from that as, as basic possible. There's enough stuff like you can get at GNC, uh, Vitamin World, that won't even have the side effects of steroids uh, as far as like eating the high quality proteins, uh, can't, can't go wrong with that. Creatine, which you, which you actually get creatine from eating meat. Uh, a lot of people take a creatine supplement to help them because you have to eat a lot of meat to get the amount of creatine that you get out of one scoop of creatine in the, in the GNC. Uh, also, you can go get carbohydrates to help you with up carbohydrates on that. Uh, steroid use, how to recover from it, try to get back on a healthy diet, uh, doing everything natural. And what I mean by natural is actually going to your health food stores and getting supplements from there that will help you uh, maintain and gain the, the goals that you're trying to reach. Yes, sir. Now that goes, now the calories that you intake, it goes on the body weight. And I, I, mean, I didn't know I was going to have to do this, so I would have actually had some handouts for you on that. 
Uh, but what I'll do is uh, I'll try to get there for you. The actual, the actual uh, seat and the, the little, the formula for it to, to be able to see your, for your weight compared to how much you intake. Because you actually have to keep up with it per calorie, and, it, and it's and it's pretty detailed. You make some people, guys that really like bodybuilders that really really do it. They actually keep a chart and they look on the back. Like you look on the back, of a can good or something like that. It'll tell you how much sugar, how much fat, how many carbohydrates, how many protein. They write all that down per serving. So when you look on the back of like a can of tuna, okay, and y'all get a chance, I go listen. If you look on the back of a can of tuna, it'll say six grams of tuna has 31 grams of protein in it, uh, six grams of carbohydrate, eight grams of fat. And you look at that, you take that, how much you eat, and you start adding all those little bit the proteins up, carbohydrates up, the fats up, calories up. You start adding all those up throughout your day. And then you start coming up with this with the form of how much you put into your body. But I get that, I get that for you. I get that for you. Any more questions? All right, thank y'all. Mm -hmm. So um, so far you've heard about your carbohydrates and you've heard about your proteins. So really quick, have you all learned about the term biomolecules yet? No? Yes? No. Okay. So, they're basic. Well, let's look at this. How about we break that word down? Biomolecules. So, what's bio? Life, right? And what are molecules? Mm, the cells need them. So, molecules are basically chemicals that we need for life. And there are four different types. So, our carbohydrates. And all carbs turn into sugars, and Ms. Moore reiterate that over and over again. But just to drive that home, when we eat ramen noodles, our body converts that very quickly to sugar. And then our pancreas tells our body to use the sugar to make energy. If you don't use the sugar, it gets stuck in your blood. And we know the sugar is sticky, right? So this sticky sugar is all broken, floating freely in our bloodstream, and then it sticks to the edges of our arteries. And that's where we get into the blindness because oxygen can't travel in blood through the arteries if all the sugar is taking up all the space because it's sticking to the edges. Does that make sense? Okay, so we understand what happens with carbs and sugar. So whether we eat a cupcake, a donut hole, a Twinkie, a ramen noodle, a combo meal, which has a whole lot of sugar, because you have two pieces of bread, you have french fries, and you have soda, right? So if your body doesn't use all of it, then it's kind of free floating in your system and you're kind of driving your, your body crazy. So the other biomolecule that was talked about was protein. And protein is basically used by our muscles. So when you go up and down these stairs all day, I commend y'all. I love the fact that you can't use the elevator because the stairs makes your body work and it makes you burn and keeps you healthy. That's a beautiful thing. So when you're going upstairs all day, your muscles are constantly engaged and you're using proteins. But in order for your muscle to use proteins, it needs energy. So where does the energy come from? The energy that the protein uses comes from the carbohydrates that you ate that turned into sugars that made ATP for the protein to activate. Does that make sense? Kind of? All right. So, another biomolecule of lipids. So, lipids are basically fats. So, can somebody live without fat at all? No, why not? Anybody? Why can't we live without fat? So, we know that cells need energy, right? Energy came from our carbohydrates. But the cell has a membrane. Do y'all remember that? Even if you haven't gotten to it this year, the cell has a membrane around it. So if I had this table stand and make a circle, that would be that cell membrane. Well, that membrane needs fat. And if the membrane doesn't have enough fatty, uh, tissue, I guess would be the right word, or if the membrane doesn't have enough fat molecules, then the membrane isn't intact. So the cell can't do its job if its membrane is 
is just letting any and every old thing in and out of the cell. Does that make sense? Okay. And then the final one are our acids, and that comes from our fruits and our vegetables and certain things that we eat that we just need a type of acid for our body to, um, to function correctly. So I wanted to tie all of that in so you could get the big picture before I go on and talk about what happens with cancers and things like that. Okay? So, how many people have groups that are working with cancer? Does anybody know what cancer is? Too many cells. He said cancer is when you have too many cells. That is pretty much it in a nutshell. So, a lot of times we think that cancer is when something foreign that's not supposed to be in our body invades us. And that's actually not the case. Cancer is overgrowth of your natural cells. So right now you have very specialized cells. You have cells that um, are muscle cells. You have cells that are bone marrow cells. You have cells in your lymphatic system. You have cells that are responsible for keeping you um, healthy. And they're your immune system cells. Well, at any time, cells can kind of begin to multiply and go crazy. So right now I have liver cells, right? And I'm supposed to have them. But if my liver cells start to multiply real fast, they become overgrown and they get greedy, basically. So if my liver cells are greedy, they start to take energy and nutrients that my other cells need. That makes sense? So imagine if you're in your house, let's simplify this, you're living in your house and you invite a friend to come live with you. Now there's enough food for everybody, including your friend, and y'all are chilling, and somebody's making dinner every night, and you have some chips to eat on when you get home from school, although we shouldn't be eating chips every day. I'm diabetes. But now, imagine your friend or somebody your family knows has already graduated. And during the day, they eat up all the food. They eat up everything. So now is there enough food to equally go around for everyone else in the household? No. So everyone else in the household will eventually kind of be similar to starving. Well, that's what cancer does to your body. Or to the body of someone who has cancer. Hmm? They should leave? They should take Yes, it, it takes all of your needs. So what happens is it's treated, the reasons cancers are so hard to treat is that they're normal cells. So when somebody goes to chemotherapy or radiation therapy, the doctor has to target the cancerous cells, but every cell in that area is gonna die. Because there's no way to kill a cancer cell here and a regular cell here because they're both still cells. Make sense? So how does that lead to lifestyle? People with cancer generally lose a lot of weight, especially during the treatment phase, because as their body is being attacked, all of their body's energy must be used to try to continue functioning. And all the time that they're trying to function normally, those cancer cells are getting more and more and more greedy. So the idea with recovering from cancer cells is they have to increase their carbohydrate intake, which is a lot different 